Well, hey friends, have you ever been down to your local nursery and you saw a beautiful fruit tree like this peach tree and you think to yourself, man, I'd really like to have that in my yard, but I don't have the first clue of how to plant one of these things. There's nothing to it. Today we're going to talk about how to plant a container grown fruit tree and don't be afraid. You can do this. So watch the video, get educated a little bit on how to do it and go get that tree, get it in the ground and enjoy your fruit. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back folks. Today I want to talk about how to plant a fruit tree, a container grown fruit tree. and There's really nothing to it. Now, back when I was a young sprout, I had a commercial landscape business when I was, back when I was 38 years old. I ran that business for about seven years. It was a very successful business up until the, to the point I moved to Virginia, but um, I left that business behind. But whenever I was um, bidding jobs or uh, going to put in some, uh, install some trees. I always had to submit my details of how I was going to plant it because they had to be per code. And these are um, an example of, I used to draw them up and submit it with my um, my bid package. And this these are the diagrams that I used then and I've used them for years and they're, they've always proven to be a um, successful installation procedure for myself. So anyway, let's get started. When um, you go to the nursery, you're gonna, your local retail nursery, you're gonna try to pick out a fruit tree. And the majority of the time, the trees you're gonna see are three gallon trees in a container. And the reason for that is, is they're cheap and easy to, um, to turn you know, through the nursery. They can get them in and sell them quick. If you get a, a, a tree that's larger than three gallon, man, that thing starts to get pricey and it, it runs a customer's, a retail customer's gonna, you know, not wanna do it. And these trees grow pretty fast, so um, there's no reason to go out and try to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a, a larger tree when you can just put in the three gallon in a couple of years, you you got you something. So anyway, let's just go with a three gallon tree. This, this, this installation right here will work for anything 10 gallons and below. So this is the way I would do it. First thing you gotta do is dig a hole, of course. Pick out a sunny location where you want it with well-drained soil and um, that you get plenty of sun, at least eight to nine hours a day of sun. That's what you're looking for. That's your good spot. Dig the hole. You wanna make it two times the size of your container, at least two times. Now for me, I live in Florida now and I have very sandy soil and it's very poor soil. It's very, uh, um, it doesn't have much growing nutrition in it. So I'm not even gonna use my soil that is in the hole, but uh, you folks can, that have, if you have good soil that's, um, you know, good soil, then use some of that soil in your backfill. When you dig the hole, Take the soil that comes out of it and take some of it and make a berm around the hole. This berm is going to need to be about six, six inches high. Now the reason for that is, is when it rains, this berm will help capture the water and it creates a basin here because these trees are going to need a lot of water. And with that berm right there, that's just going to help you. It captures the rain and keeps it from running off and, and funnels that water right on down into that root system. So you want to go ahead and get you a berm up there made out of the soil that you remove from the hole. Now, when I dig the hole, I get the thing out. For me, I'm saying two times the size of the container, but for me, I got sandy soil. I make my hole much larger than two times. I'm, I make it the size I would normally plant a 45 gallon tree. It's huge. It's three or four feet in diameter for a little bitty old three gallon container. And the reason that is, is the soil is so poor and porous that water just falls right through. So it's hard to get these trees to get started with um, 
sandy soil. So I make a much bigger hole. So when I put in the backfill, I'm putting in high quality backfill for that tree to get started in. When I get the hole started, if you have fish, you can get fish at your local lo local uh, bait and tackle shop or you can go to a fresh fish market and they'll give you the free head. They'll give you heads and guts. They'll give it to you for free. So it's just free fertilizer. But put that in the bottom of the hole about 10 inches below the, where the root ball is. So that's how you know how deep you want to make it. Measure the um, depth of your container and add 10 inches to it. And for me here in Florida, I made that even more. But anyway, let's get going here. To back, I get the hole dug. I make a berm out of the out of the hole dirt that came out of the hole, and then I backfill that with three equal parts of peat, um, black cow cow manure, and topsoil. Uh, three equal parts. I just mix it up in my fertilizer and blend it all together. And during that time, um, I'll also add in whatever fertilizer that I, I think I need. And in my case, I'm using citrus and fruit tree fertilizer. It's an organic fertilizer, as well as some bone meal. And I mix that in, in the um, wheelbarrow, and I, I spin it all together and, and um, dump it into the hole. And I keep doing that process until I fill the hole all the way back up. And when I have the hole filled with the backfill, then I dig a hole so that I can put my tree in the backfill. Now, if you if you have good soil and you don't have the sandy soil like me, you can make this four equal parts. One part of the soil that you pull out of here, one part peat, one part black cow, and one part of the, um, you can uh, do the topsoil. Or you can just use your soil that came out of here, black cow and peat, and don't even buy the topsoil. Either way, it'll save you some money. So um, in my case, I'm not even going to use the soil. So I keep dumping the wheelbarrow loads in here till I get it full. I dig a hole. I put the tree in, and if you'll notice the top of the root ball, it's about an inch and a half above the existing grade of where I dug a hole. I don't want this tree to be sunk down in here um, below the grade level because it'll cause it to, um, it'll kill it, it'll smother it. So you want to keep that top of that root ball that came out of the container a, a, a couple of inches above the existing grade line. Okay, so you stick it in higher than than it was in the container. And you keep this all backfilled, you pack it in nice and tight, and um, once you got it in, then you, I, I usually cut me some stakes. I use a two by two um, board, and I cut them off about, i say about four feet long, and I sharpen one end, I cut one end at a 45 degree bevel or so, so it'll drive into the ground, and I drill a little hole in the top so I can run my wire through it. And I hammer these down into the ground. I usually just use two on both sides of the tree. And I take this 12 gauge wire and I run it through that hole and tie it onto the, to the stake. And then I take a piece of garden hose and I cut off, you know, a piece about 10 or 12 inches long. And um, I run the wire through it, tie it onto the other side. Then I do the same thing on the other side of the tree so it, it makes, you know, two hoses with the tree in the middle captured in between the two hoses and it holds it in place from the wind so it's not pu pushing and pulling on this root system from the wind. It also keeps it straight while that um, trunk is developing and getting um, mature. It's, it hardens and woodens up heavier and it'll keep that trunk nice and straight by supporting it correctly so you know that it's gonna grow the way you want it to grow. Instead of crooked or bent over, you keep it supported. And I leave these stakes in the ground, you know, at least a full year or more, as long as they last. And when they finally do rot off in the ground, then I'll pull them off, and by then the tree's supporting its own self. So I leave them in there until they just won't stay anymore. But hammer those down in, wire them up, and put that hose on there around the trunk so this wire doesn't damage the trunk because um, you don't want to damage the bark. So you just keep that hose on there against the tree so it doesn't rub on it. Now, once you get the um, tree in, you need to water that thing good. I mean, I'm 
don't just put a sprinkler on there. You, you need to deep water it and um, especially when you just plant it because it's going to have a little root shock from being transplanted but flood that um, basin that you created with your berm to where it's just actually standing in water and let that water soak down through. You want to deep water it and you want to do that at least every three days and if it's really hot when you plant your tree you may even want to do it more but you want to keep keep on top of that you know for um at least a couple of weeks until this tree gets established i would say do that for about two weeks deep water it and then at that point once it's done you can just go out here and check on it and make sure the soil is moist by just sticking your hand down in there and feeling of it and then you can just hand water it but don't use a sprinkler to try to water trees just hand water it and that's about it that's that's really all there is to it you can add a little mulch on the top here if you want to that'll help you um retain some of the moisture and again don't don't cover up the top of the root you can just just a little light layer of mulch there to um, help you retain the water in the in the um, hole so that's pretty much it for the three gallon tree there's nothing to it now when you go to a bigger tree if you go up, this is a 15 gallon tree or above. And they're a little bit harder to do. They're a little bit bigger and heavier, so there's just more to it. But you plant the tree, the root ball, exactly the same as we did on the small one. So I do everything the same. The only difference is, is when I get to the point of supporting it, I usually use the three rebar system. What I mean by that is I take these three rebars are about four feet each and I hammer them down into the ground around a root ball in a triangle pattern you know three three of them and then I um, take some wire and I wrap around the top of the rebar and I come up to the first branch and I run some hose just like I did the other one I cut a piece of hose off about 12 inches run the wire through the hose and wrap that um, hose around the trunk above the first limb so the limb holds it in place and then just tie it on and do that in three positions so that that tree is straight and when the wind blows it it's held from this point to this point very tight so it doesn't move it doesn't damage the tree roots that are trying to grow out by the wind pulling them loose all the time so put those three um there's three points of support on there with the rebar and the 12 gauge wire with the hose around the trunk. That'll hold that thing just right. Then when you get through, I usually like to come down and cut off a piece of hose and cover that piece of rebar that's sticking up because I don't want no youngin to fall on it or step on it and hurt herself. So I always cover it with a piece of hose just to protect everybody from it. And I also take a little piece of orange tape and I tie on the wires, all three wires, because people will be walking around looking at your stuff and actually walk into the wire and trip and they could hurt themselves. So I put, I hang a piece of tape, orange tape, safety tape on there. So it just draws attention to it. But everything else is the same way as the small tree. It's just, just a bigger scale and a different way to support it's all. So this is my large tree, tree installation. And um, I leave these wires on here for at least a year till you can look up at this tree and it looks good and sturdy. And then you can eventually take these off and remove them if you want. I leave them on there until I'm completely convinced that the tree is has a straight trunk and it's um, off and running with no problem whatsoever. And then I can pull it off. But, these are the two installations that I, I recommend on how to plant your trees. This one you'll use the most and occasionally you'll use one like this. You'll get a larger tree, 15 gallon and above. And um, this is how you do it. So there's really nothing to it. So um, enjoy your fruit trees. Go ahead and get one and um, get it in the ground and get it started and enjoy some fruit right out of your own yard. So thanks for watching. I hope this uh, little diagram helps you. I'll put, um, we'll put these on our Facebook page, Hollis and Nancy's Homestead. We'll 
take a shot of these and put them on there so um, you can take a look at them at home. So until we see you next time, we really appreciate you watching and being a part of our um, homestead family. And if you like our videos, please subscribe and, and uh, be a part of the team with us. And you can, and uh, until we see you next time, I just want to always say, by his hands, we are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen. Have a blessed day. <laughs>